Apollo 15, Wikipedia article audio. One in cislunar space. 39 minutes, 7 seconds. Crew. Backup crew. Apollo 15 was the ninth manned mission in the United States Apollo program, the fourth to land on the moon, and the eighth successful manned mission. It was the first of what were termed J missions, long stays on the moon, with a greater focus on science than had been possible on previous missions. It was also the first mission on which the lunar roving vehicle was used. The mission began on July 26, 1971, and ended on August 7. At the time, NASA called it the most successful manned flight ever achieved. Commander David Scott and Lunar Module Pilot James Irwin spent three days on the Moon, including 18 one-half hours outside the spacecraft on lunar extravehicular activity. The mission landed near Hadley Rill, in an area of the Mare Imbrium called Paulus Putridinus. The crew explored the area using the first lunar rover, which allowed them to travel much farther from the lunar module than had been possible on missions without the rover. They collected 77 kilograms of lunar surface material. At the same time, Command Module Pilot Alfred Worden orbited the Moon, using a scientific instrument module in the service module to study the lunar surface and environment in great detail with a panoramic camera, a gamma-ray spectrometer, a mapping camera, a laser altimeter, a mass spectrometer, and a lunar sub-satellite deployed at the end of Apollo 15's stay in lunar orbit. The mission successfully accomplished its objectives, but was marred by negative publicity that accompanied disclosure of the crew carrying unauthorized postage stamps which they had planned to sell after their return. Ironically, this mission was one of very few that had been honored with the issue of a commemorative U.S. stamp, with this first use of a lunar rover happening one decade after the first Mercury astronaut launch. All three astronauts on the All-United States Air Force crew received an honorary degree or master's degree from the University of Michigan, including Scott's honorary degree, awarded in the spring of 1971, months before the launch. Scott had attended the University of Michigan, but left before graduating to accept an appointment to the United States Military Academy. The crewmen did their undergraduate work at either the United States Military Academy or the United States Naval Academy. Support Crew Schmidt was the first member of Group 4 to be selected as a prime or backup crew member for an Apollo flight, from Group 4 he was the only astronaut to make it to the moon, with the last Apollo mission at the end of 1972. The crew for Apollo 15 had previously served as the backup crew for Apollo 12. There had been a friendly rivalry between that prime and backup crew on that mission, with the prime being all United States Navy, and the backup all United States Air Force. Flight Directors Originally Apollo 15 would have been an H mission, like Apollo 12, 13, and 14. But on September 2, 1970, NASA announced it was cancelling what were to be the current incarnations of the Apollo 15 and Apollo 19 missions. To maximize the return from the remaining missions, Apollo 15 would now fly as a J mission and have the honor of carrying the first lunar rover. One of the major changes in the training for Apollo 15 was the geology training. Although on previous flights the crews had been trained in field geology, for the first time Apollo 15 would make it a high priority. Scott and Irwin would train with Leon Silver, a Caltech geologist who on Earth was interested in the Precambrian 
Silver had been suggested by Harrison Schmidt as an alternative to the classroom lecturers that NASA had previously used. Among other things, Silver had made important refinements to the methods for dating rocks using the decay of uranium into lead in the late 1950s. At first Silver would take the prime and backup crews to various geological sites in Arizona and New Mexico as if for a normal field geology lesson, but as launch time approached, these trips became more realistic. Crews began to wear mock UPS of the backpacks they would carry, and communicate using walkie-talkies to a Capcom in a tent, always fellow astronauts were the only people who normally would speak to the crew. The Capcom was accompanied by a group of geologists unfamiliar with the area who would rely on the astronauts' descriptions to interpret the findings. Mission Parameters The decision to land at Hadley came in September 1970. The site selection committees had narrowed the field down to two sites Hadley Rill or the crater Marius near which were a group of low, possibly volcanic, domes. Although not ultimately his decision, the commander of a mission always held great sway. To David Scott the choice was clear, with Hadley, being exploration at its finest. Earth Parking Orbit Command Module Pilot Alfred Worden undertook a different kind of geology training. Working with an Egyptian-born geologist, Farouk Elbaz, he flew over areas in an airplane simulating the speed at which terrain would pass below him while in the Apollo Command-slash-Service module in orbit. He became quite adept at making geologic observations as objects passed below. LMCSM Docking Apollo 15 was launched on July 26. 1971, at 9.34 a.m. EDT from the Kennedy Space Center at Merritt Island, Florida. During the launch, the SIC did not completely shut off following staging for four seconds, creating the possibility of the spent stage banging into the S-2 engines, damaging them and forcing an abort. Despite this, the third stage and spacecraft reached its planned Earth parking orbit. A couple of hours into the mission, the third stage reignited to propel the spacecraft out of Earth orbit and onto the Moon. A few days after launching from Florida, the spacecraft passed behind the far side of the Moon, where the service propulsion system engine on the CSM ignited for a six-minute burn to slow the craft down into an initial lunar orbit. Once the lowest point of altitude in the orbit was reached, the SBS engine was fired again, to place the spacecraft into the proper descent orbit for the lunar module landing at Hadley. EVAS Most of the first part of the day after arriving in lunar orbit on July 30 was spent in preparing the lunar module for descent to the lunar surface later on that day. When preparations were complete, undocking from the CSM was attempted, it did not occur, because of a faulty seal in the hatch mechanism. The command module pilot, Alfred Worden, resealed the hatch the LM then separated from the CSM. David Scott and James Irwin continued preparations for the descent while Worden remained in the CSM, returning to a higher orbit to perform lunar observations and await his crewmates return a few days later. Soon, Scott and Irwin began the descent to the Hadley landing site. Several minutes after descent was initiated, at pitch over and the beginning of the approach phase of the landing, the LM was 6 kilometers east of the pre-selected landing target. On learning this, Scott altered the flight path of the LM. They touched down at 22 hours 16 minutes and 29 seconds UTC on July 30 at Hadley, within a few hundred meters of the planned landing site. 
One of the legs of the LM landed in a small crater so the module was tilted by 10 degrees the maximum acceptable was 15 degrees. While previous crews had exited the lunar module shortly after landing, the crew of Apollo 15 elected to spend the rest of the day inside the LM, waiting until the next day to perform the first of three EVAs, or moonwalks in order to preserve their sleep rhythm on a mission on which they were to spend a significantly longer time on the surface than previous crews had spent. Before they slept, Scott performed a stand-up EVA, during which the LM was depressurized and he photographed their surroundings from the top docking hatch. Throughout the sleep period, Mission Control, in Houston, monitored a slow but steady oxygen leak. The data output of the onboard telemetry computers was limited during the night to conserve energy, so controllers could not determine the exact cause of the leak without awaking the crew. Scott and Irwin eventually were awakened an hour early, and the source of the leak was found to be an open valve on the urine transfer device. After the problem was solved, the crew began preparation for the first moon walk. Four hours later, Scott and Irwin became the seventh and eighth humans, respectively, to walk on the moon. After unloading the lunar roving vehicle, the two drove to the first moon walk's primary destination, Elbow Crater, along the edge of Hadley Rill. On returning to the LM Falcon, Scott and Irwin deployed the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments package. The first EVA lasted about six one-half hours. The target of the second EVA, the next day, was the edge of Mount Hadley Delta, where the pair sampled boulders and craters along the Apennine front. During this moonwalk, the astronauts recovered what came to be one of the more famous lunar samples collected on the Moon during Apollo, sample number 15,415, more commonly known as the Genesis Rock. Once back at the landing site, Scott continued to try to drill holes for an experiment at the ALSEP site, with which he had struggled the day before. After conducting soil mechanics experiments and erecting a U.S. flag, Scott and Irwin returned to the LM. EVA 2 lasted 7 hours and 12 minutes. Planning and Training During EVA 3, the third and final moonwalk of the mission, the crew again ventured to the edge of Hadley Rill, this time to the northwest of the immediate landing site. After returning to the LM's location, Scott performed an experiment in view of the television camera, using a feather and hammer to demonstrate Galileo's theory that all objects in a given gravity field fall at the same rate, regardless of mass. He dropped the hammer and feather at the same time, because of the negligible lunar atmosphere, there was no drag on the feather which hit the ground at the same time as the hammer. Mission Highlights Scott then drove the rover to a position away from the LM, where the television camera could be used to observe the lunar liftoff. Before the mission, the crew had contacted Belgian sculptor Paul van Hoyedonk to create a small aluminum statuette called Fallen Astronaut to commemorate those astronauts and cosmonauts who lost their lives in the pursuit of space exploration. Scott left the sculpture by the rover, along with a plaque bearing the names of 14 known American astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts deceased by that time. The memorial was left while the television camera was turned off, only Irwin knew what Scott was doing at the time. Scott told Mission Control he was doing some cleanup activities around the rover. Apollo 15 Press Kit, NASA, Release No. 71-119K, July 15, 1971, Apollo 15 Preliminary Science Report NASA, Manned Spacecraft Center NASA SP-289, 
1972, Apollo Program Summary Report, NASA, JSC 09423, April 1975, Moonport, A History of Apollo Launch Facilities and Operations by Charles D. Benson and William Barnaby Faherty. NASA SP 4204, 1978, Articles Carried on Manned Space Flights NASA News Release 72-189, September 15, 1972 Reprinted at CollectSpace.com, Apollo 15 Flight Journal, Apollo 15 Lunar Surface Journal The EVA lasted 4 hours and 50 minutes. In total, the two astronauts spent 18 one half hours outside the LM and collected approximately 77 kilograms of lunar samples. After lifting off from the lunar surface two days and 18 hours after landing the LM ascent stage rendezvoused and redocked with the CSM with Worden aboard in orbit. After transferring samples and other items from the LM to the CSM, the LM was sealed off jettisoned, and intentionally crashed into the lunar surface. After completing more observations of the moon from orbit and releasing the sub-satellite, the three-person crew departed lunar orbit with another burn of the SBS engine. Apollo 15, in the Mountains of the Moon NASA documentary film HQ-217 on the Apollo 15 mission at the Internet Archive, Episode 45, July 4, 2011, Apollo 15 Command Module Pilot Al Worden Interview with Astro Talk UK, recorded in London on May 22, 2011, Apollo 15 Launch, Video at Maniac World, Apollo Launch and Mission Videos at ApolloTV.net The next day, on the return trip to Earth, Worden performed a spacewalk in deep space, the first of its kind, to retrieve exposed film from the Sim Bay. Later on in the day, the crew set a record for the longest Apollo flight to that point. Launch and Outbound Trip Moon Landing Lunar Surface Return to Earth On approach to Earth the next day, August 7, the service module was jettisoned, and the command module re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. Although one of the three parachutes on the CM failed to deploy properly, only two were required for a safe landing. Upon landing in the North Pacific Ocean, the crew were recovered and taken aboard the recovery ship. USS Okinawa after a mission lasting 12 days, 7 hours, 11 minutes, and 53 seconds. Apollo 15 used Command-Service Module CSM-112, which was given the call sign Endeavour, named after the HMS Endeavour and Lunar Module LM-10, call sign Falcon, named after the United States Air Force Academy mascot. If Apollo 15 had flown as an H mission, it would have been with CSM-111 and LM-9. That CSM was used by the Apollo Soyuz test project in 1975, but the lunar module went unused and is now on display at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Technicians at the Kennedy Space Center had many problems with the SIM bay in the service module. It was the first time it had flown and experienced problems from the start. Problems came from the fact the instruments were designed to operate in zero gravity, but had to be tested in the one gram on the surface of the Earth. As such, things like the 7.5M booms for the mass and gamma ray spectrometers could only be tested using railings that tried to mimic the space environment and so they never worked particularly well. When the technicians tried to integrate the entire bay into the rest of the spacecraft, data streams would not synchronize, and lead investigators of the instruments would want to make last-minute checks and changes. <laughs>
When it came time to test the operation of the gamma ray spectrometer, it was necessary to stop every engine within 10 miles of the test site. On the lunar module, the fuel and oxidizer tanks were enlarged on both the descent and ascent stages and the engine bell on the descent stage was extended. Batteries and solar cells were added for increased electrical power. In all this increased the weight of the lunar module to 36,000 pounds, 4,000 pounds heavier than previous models. Endeavour is currently on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. The lunar roving vehicle had been in development since May 1969, with the contract awarded to Boeing. It could be folded into a space 5 feet by 20 inches. Unloaded it weighed 460 pounds and when carrying two astronauts and their equipment, 1,500 pounds. Each wheel was independently driven by a 1 4th horsepower electric motor. Although it could be driven by either astronaut, the commander always drove. Traveling at speeds up to 6 to 8 miles per hour, it meant that for the first time the astronauts could travel far afield from their lander and still have enough time to do some scientific experiments. The Apollo 15 subsatellite was a small satellite released into lunar orbit from the Sim Bay. Its main objectives were to study the plasma, particle, and magnetic field environment of the Moon and map the lunar gravity field. Specifically, it measured plasma and energetic particle intensities and vector magnetic fields, and facilitated tracking of the satellite velocity to high precision. A basic requirement was that the satellite acquire fields and particle data everywhere on the orbit around the Moon. The Moon's roughly circular orbit about the Earth at 380,000 km carried the subsatellite into both interplanetary space and various regions of the Earth's magnetosphere. The satellite orbited the Moon and returned data from August 4, 1971 until January 1973. Hardware In later years, through a study of many lunar orbiting satellites, scientists came to discover that most low lunar orbits are unstable. Fortunately, PFS-1 had been placed, unknown to mission planners at the time, very near to one of only four lunar frozen orbits, where a lunar satellite may remain indefinitely. Releasing the subsatellite was the crew's final activity in lunar orbit occurring an hour before the burn to take them back to Earth. A virtually identical subsatellite was deployed by Apollo 16. The Saturn V that launched Apollo 15 was designated SA-510, the tenth flight-ready model of the rocket. As the payload of the rocket was greater, changes were made to its launch trajectory and Saturn V itself. The rocket was launched in a more southerly direction and the Earth parking orbit lowered to 166 km above the Earth's surface. These two changes meant 1,100 pounds more could be launched. The propellant reserves were reduced and the number of retro rockets on the SIC first stage reduced from 8 to 4. The four outboard engines of the SIC would be burned longer and the center engine would also burn longer before being shut down. Changes were also made to the S-2 to stop pogo oscillations. Spacecraft Lunar Rover Lunar Subsatellite Once all the various components had been installed on the Saturn V, it was moved to the launch site. Launch Complex 39A During late June and early July 1971, the rocket and launch umbilical tower were struck by lightning at least four times. All was well however, with only minor damage suffered. The astronauts themselves wore new space suits. On all previous Apollo flights, 
including the non-lunar flights, the commander and lunar module pilot had worn suits with the life support, liquid cooling, and communications connections in two parallel rows of three. On Apollo 15, the new suits, dubbed the A7LB, had the connectors situated in triangular pairs. This new arrangement, along with the relocation of the entry zipper, from the right shoulder to the left hip, allowed the inclusion of a new waist joint, allowing the astronauts to bend completely over and to sit on the rover. Upgraded backpacks allowed for longer duration moonwalks, and the command module pilot, who wore a suit with three connectors, would wear a five-connector version of the old moon suit the liquid cooling water connector being removed, as the command module pilot would make a deep space EVA to retrieve film cartridges on the flight home. After a successful mission, the reputations of the crew and NASA were tarnished by a deal the crew had made with a German stamp dealer. H. Walter Ironman who had many professional and social contacts with NASA employees and the astronaut corps, arranged for Scott to carry unauthorized commemorative postal covers in his space suit, in addition to the postal covers NASA had contracted to carry for the United States Postal Service. Ironman had promised each astronaut $7,000 in the form of savings accounts in return for 100 covers signed after having been on the moon. He told the astronauts that he would not advertise or sell the covers until the end of the Apollo program. Irwin wrote in his book to rule the night that the astronauts had agreed to the deal as a way to help finance their children's college tuition. Another controversy arose after the flight, caused by the fallen astronaut statuette that Scott had left on the moon. The crew claimed they had agreed with the sculptor. Paul Van Hoyedonk, that no replicas were to be made, in order to satisfy NASA's aversion to commercial exploitation of the space program. After the sculpture's existence was publicly disclosed during their post-flight press conference, the National Air and Space Museum contacted the crew asking for a replica made for the museum. Van Hoyedonk, whose account of the agreement contradicts Scott's, subsequently advertised replicas for sale to the public. Under pressure from NASA, Van Hoyedonk withdrew the sale offer. The three astronauts of Apollo 15 were all United States Air Force active duty officers, and their patch carries Air Force motifs. The circular patch features stylized red, white, and blue birds flying over the Hadley Rill section of the moon. Immediately behind the birds, a line of craters form the Roman numeral 15. The artwork is circled in red, with a white band giving the mission and crew names and a blue border. Scott contacted fashion designer Emilio Pucci to design the patch, who came up with the basic idea of the three-bird motif on a square patch. The crew changed the shape to round and the colors from blues and greens to a patriotic red, white, and blue. Worden stated that each bird also represented an astronaut, white being his own color, with Scott the blue bird and Irwin the red. The Roman numeral design was created when NASA insisted that the mission number be displayed in Arabic numerals. Launch Vehicle the halo area of the Apollo 15 landing site, generated by the LM's exhaust plume, was observed by a camera aboard the Japanese lunar orbiter Cellini and confirmed by comparative analysis of photographs in May 2008. This corresponds well to photographs taken from the Apollo 15 command module showing a change in surface reflectivity due to the plume and was the first visible trace of manned landings on the moon seen from space since the close of the Apollo program. Rover Training Scott and Irwin train on Earth to use the lunar rover. Launch of Apollo 15 Launch of Apollo 15 running from T-30S through to T-plus-40S
Transposition, Docking and Extraction, Endeavor comes into dock with Falcon. CSM moving away, Endeavor filmed from Falcon after undocking. Landing on the Moon, the landing on the Moon at Hadley seen from the perspective of the Lunar Module Pilot. Starts at about 5,000 feet. On board the lunar rover, 16 mm film sequence of driving the lunar rover. Hammer and feather drop, Scott demonstrates that Galileo was right. Liftoff from the moon, the liftoff from the moon is seen by the TV camera on the lunar rover. Liftoff from the moon. The liftoff from the moon is from the perspective of the lunar module pilot. Space suits. Scandals. Warden's Eva. Warden undertakes an Eva to retrieve film cassettes from the science instrument module. Splashdown. Descent and splashdown of Apollo 15. Mission insignia. An experiment at LBNL involving high-energy particles from a cyclotron used to investigate the origin of the flashes of light seen by Apollo astronauts on their way to the Moon. Experiments were conducted on board Apollo 15, 16, and 17 and Skylab to investigate this phenomenon, with the light flashes experiment package flying on Apollo 16 and 17. Visibility from space Multimedia Depiction in popular culture Apollo Lunar Surface Journal Bibliography This article incorporates public domain material from websites or documents of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. NASA Reports Multimedia